Big spoilers for the Venom 2 post credit scene. Just thought I'd get that out of the way right now. You've been warned. Okay, still here? Good. With the post credit scene monumentally changing the game by putting Venom and Tom Holland's Spider-Man on a collision course, that's understandably all anyone's talking about. But let's not forget the villain that was teased at the end of Venom 2 before the credits started to roll. That's right, it's Toxin. Is there a place for Toxin in the inevitable Venom 3 now that we're dealing with the multiverse? What's the best way to include him in the story? Well, we'll discuss some options right now. So before we dive into what works best for the Toxin character in live action, I think it's important to know his backstory as well as the backstory of Patrick Mulligan, who winds up wearing the Toxin symbiote first. So I know the Venom movies are not really interested in explaining the concept of symbiote births and whatnot, but it's pretty complex in the comics. Venom, let there be Carnage's only line of explanation for Carnage's creation was the Venom symbiote shouting out, it's a red one, and getting scared. Other than that, Carnage called Venom father, but that's literally about it when it comes to answers. But any avid comic reader knows there's more to it than that. The Venom symbiote was actually 998th in its lineage, and then it's established that the symbiotes produce asexually. So around the time when Eddie Brock was sharing a cell with Cletus Cassidy, the Venom symbiote essentially gave birth while breaking Eddie out, thus creating the Carnage symbiote, which happened to merge with the nearby Cletus Cassidy. That's a case of rotten luck right there. There. So that made Carnage the 999th in its lineage, and we all know what comes next. When it came time for it, Carnage produced another symbiote, big number 1000. Only this time things were a little different. Carnage knew that this offspring would be more powerful than him, so he wanted to destroy it. But Venom had a different idea and wanted to raise this new symbiote as a partner. Venom named the new symbiote Toxin, and it ended up fused with New York cop Patrick Mulligan. Venom eventually realized that this symbiote was too powerful, and Patrick was really trying to be a good guy. So that resulted in Venom and Carnage teaming up in order to try to destroy it to no avail. Patrick then gets a fascinating character arc as he struggles with controlling the powerful new symbiote and staying a good man. They eventually reach a compromise where Toxin can have two hours of playtime each night if there's no theft, arson, or homicide involved. So it's a pretty complex character dynamic that ends tragically when Patrick is tragically beaten and his life is cut short. So now that you've got a taste of Toxin, let's discuss how they can fit that backstory into their live action plans. So the big question everyone has after Venom Let There Be Carnage's game-changing post credit scene is what exactly happened? Did the Sonyverse and the MCU merge together thanks to some multiverse shenanigans and now every character who was in the Sonyverse is now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe permanently? Was it just Venom who made the jump over? Remember, right before the big event, Venom was about to mind meld with Eddie to show him the secrets of the universe. Did that have anything to do with it? Is it permanent or temporary? So many questions are are happening now that I wish the post credit scene gave us a bit more than Venom licking a picture of Tom Holland, don't you? Well, let's say for this point that Venom's world and the MCU are now exactly the same. It brought over everyone in Eddie's life, which means Detective Patrick Mulligan, played by Stephen Graham, and everyone has to deal with this sudden shift in reality. Or maybe not. Maybe they can work out some science-y mumbo-jumbo and say Venom and Eddie still have all their memories of their timeline because of their psychic link and special symbiote powers. So that would mean anyone with the symbiote would remember the original timeline, and it just so happens that Detective Mulligan is now experiencing a change of his own. While we thought Shriek ended him for good, it's revealed at the end that he now has glowing blue eyes and is talking about superpowered individuals. What most likely happened is that a bit of the Carnage symbiote stayed behind in Mulligan, and now he'll mutate into Toxin. People really need to stop ingesting symbiotes, geez. Anyways, because of the memories of the OG timeline, Mulligan and Toxin will now go after Venom, leading to Venom's first big fight in the MCU. How crazy would that be? You could have Venom and Eddie desperately trying to adjust to the new world around them, but at every turn they're attacked by Toxin to keep them off balance. This could lead to a certain friendly neighborhood wall crawler helping them out? Okay, so we know Spidey and Venom are going to meet up again on screen. At least, I hope so. How lame would that post credit scene be if Venom 3 starts with Venom waking up and saying the events of Venom 2 were all some wacky dream? You know, after the craziness of Venom 2, I wouldn't be that surprised. Anyways, as I mentioned before in this scenario, if Toxin attacks Venom while Venom is trying to get his bearings in the MCU, maybe Spider-Man will swing to his aid. Yes, I know we all want to see Venom fight Spider-Man, but I actually think a team-up to take down a bigger threat 
threat is better for this current situation. Look, in the comics, the reason why Venom and Spider-Man make such great enemies is because Eddie Brock hates Peter Parker and the Venom symbiote was Spidey's suit for a while. There was a legitimate connection and that's what makes all their battles so epic. Right now, if Spidey meets Venom, he'll just say how they sorta look alike and that's about it before the punches start to fly. What's really the point? But if you have them work together to take down Toxin, then you actually have a much more interesting story by having the two characters, or should I say three characters, meaning Eddie, Peter, and Venom, all learn from one another. Venom and Eddie could learn more about being an actual hero. Venom 2 saw the pair take the next steps to officially become the lethal protectors, so the logical progression is them trying it out but not quite succeeding at first. Spider-Man could teach them valuable lessons and vice versa. Think about it. The big thing about Peter Parker's character is that he's a photographer for the Daily Bugle. But right now, our Peter has shown no interest in that kind of work. Maybe being around Eddie will pique his interest in journalism and lead Peter to work closer with the Daily Bugle in the future. And then on the flip side, Venom could be so inspired by Spidey that he adopts the classic white spider on his chest as he maybe makes a return to his own universe. More on that in the next point. Let's present another option here. We know Venom 2 ends with the Spider-Man tease, but what if that's all resolved in No Way Home? What if the events we're seeing in Venom 2 take place during the events of the MCU's Spidey's third film, and it all resolves itself at the end? If Doc Ock and Green Goblin are arriving from different universes, then why couldn't Venom, right? And chances are the end of No Way Home will end with things in some semblance of normal, and the timeline's more or less fixed. That means whatever Venom and Spidey confrontation is happening will happen in No Way Home, and then Venom will be punted back to the Sonyverse for his third solo movie. That's honestly probably the easiest way to do it. Look, I may get some flack for this, but I actually don't mind if they keep the Sonyverse and the MCU separate. I don't need a Spidey to fight this specific version of Venom. I mean, unless a lobster tank is involved, then I guess I'll watch. Anyway, by having multiverse shenanigans that more or less reset the status quo and send Venom back to his own separate universe by the time of Venom 3 would mean we get more time with Toxin. Like, if we continue on this MCU trend, then there's no point to have Toxin included at all, which would be kind of unfortunate. So let's say Venom is back with a renewed sense of heroism for Venom 3 after an encounter with Spidey in No Way Home, but now he has to deal with Patrick Mulligan and his new symbiote Toxin. This immediately sets up an awesome conflict. Mulligan is obviously a cop who now has a serious bone to pick with superpowered vigilantes like Venom, but now he's granted the powers of the symbiote and that clashes with his law-abiding tendencies. Meanwhile, Venom is trying to figure out the balance of being a hero in this universe outside the confines of the law. Picture it. Venom works off his own version of justice while Mulligan both tries to stop him and do his own type of police work with his symbiote helping. That's a great conflict and is actually rooted in a connection the two symbiotes share. One of the big flaws of Venom 2 was the relationship between Eddie and Cletus. They weren't similar at all, despite Cletus dropping that we're not so different you and I line that bad guys love to use. If they go with this plot, then you have a villain like Mulligan who's actually sort of similar to Venom. So my vote is for the last point I made, but let's explore some other options. We know that Venom 2 feels a lot like a love story between Eddie and Venom, so what does a romantic comedy sequel need? A new love triangle. That's right, could the Toxin symbiote actually be a romantic foil to Venom? I mean, it's possible. Venom and Eddie always seem like they're on shaky ground, and although they resolved most of their issues by the end of the sequel, could a brand new shiny symbiote actually give Venom a run for his money in terms of vying for Eddie's heart? Well, all I'm saying is that there's a slight comic precedence for this. There's an arc where Eddie merges with Toxin for a bit, and it goes really well for a while, with them even chasing down the Venom symbiote. Now, obviously Eddie and Venom are OTP, and they'll end up together at the end, but a different way to highlight another symbiote battle would be presenting a symbiote that actually might be a better match for Eddie. What could Toxin offer Eddie that Venom can't? Well, besides being faster and stronger, maybe Toxin can actually cook breakfast and doesn't throw expensive television sets out the window when he's mad. Toxin is supposed to be one of the most dangerous symbiotes around. As mentioned before, he's the 1,000th in his lineage, which makes him kind of a big deal. His speed, strength, and stamina are supposed to surpass Venom and Carnage, and he has a few added perks that help give him the edge. So will it be enough for Venom to beat him this time alone? Like, I'm disappointed that Carnage really didn't seem that much more powerful than Venom besides some added red tendrils. So if they're going to convince me that another symbiote is the way to go, then I really need Toxin to bring the heat. 
And I think it's a possibility. Sure, Woody Harrelson is one of the finest actors we have working today, but Stephen Graham, who played a Patrick Mulligan, is a great actor as well. He was terrifying as Al Capone in Boardwalk Empire, so he can definitely bring the menace to play an all-time great bad guy. So instead of just having a fight where Venom overcomes a stronger opponent through luck and sheer force of will, how about a Sonyverse team-up? Yes, that's right, I think a Venom-led Sinister Six should fight Toxin. Think about it for a second. You know that's what the Sonyverse is building up to. We have Morbius coming down the pipeline soon, and then after that we'll have a not-quicksilver Aaron Taylor Johnson playing Kraven the Hunter. It would be a travesty if all these anti-heroes didn't meet up to take down a big threat, and Venom could possibly turn to these other anti-heroes for help in taking down Toxin once and for all. Toxin definitely deserves better treatment than Carnage got, and having him actually be a threatening big bad that multiple anti-heroes have to team up to stop would be epic to see. Plus, I want to see how well Venom can work with a team, don't you? I know the title of this video is all about all the ways that Venom could fight Toxin, and I think I've presented a few plausible options with a few more on the way, but I want to first talk about a slightly more comedic spin that could possibly happen with Toxin and Venom in the inevitable Venom 3. So if we look at Venom 2 as a bit of a romantic comedy where Venom and Eddie worked out their relationship and decided they wanted to be together, then the next step is children. Hey, when you have a solid relationship, why not throw a child in the mix for fun? Toxin is the offspring of Venom's offspring meeting Venom's Toxin's grandpa. I want to see a situation where Eddie and Venom work to raise a new symbiote together, like co-parenting. So instead of three men and a baby, it'll be one man, one symbiote, and one baby symbiote. Hmm, that doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. It's a work in progress, okay? But with the creation of a new symbiote, Eddie and Venom might want to take it under their wing in order to stop it from going insane and stop it from wanting to eliminate and eat everybody in its path. Hey, that's a lesson Venom is still learning himself, so that would definitely be interesting to see. In this situation, Patrick Mulligan is the only wild card here. How would he react to Eddie and Venom trying trying to teach him how to control his symbiote and working together. It's an interesting dynamic to think about. Maybe it will be like the comics, where instead of Patrick giving Toxin two hours of free time every night, Toxin will instead take over Patrick's body at night without Patrick knowing it. Meaning that by day, Patrick hunts Venom and Eddie for answers, but by night, Venom and Eddie train the Toxin symbiote how to be a hero without Patrick knowing. That's the kind of kooky drama you would see at this point, given the trajectory of Venom 2, don't you think? So a lot has been said about Patrick Mulligan and Toxin, but what if we cut Patrick Mulligan out of the story altogether for Venom 3 and just use the symbiote that's growing inside of him? It's certainly not impossible. Nobody's walking out of Venom 2 desperate for more Patrick Mulligan, so if he has to be written out of the story, then there's ways the story can continue in interesting ways. One such way would be the symbiote warriors. In the comics, a villain known as Blackheart eliminates Mulligan and steals the Toxin symbiote. He then uses it to merge pieces of the Toxin symbiote with four clones of X-23, the little girl clone of Wolverine that we saw in live action during the Logan movie, and creates a batch of symbiote warriors. This would create a new type of threat for Venom and Eddie to face in the third movie. Not just one symbiote on symbiote fight, but rather Venom versus a bunch of them. You could give them all unique skill sets and designs to really make them stand out and provide a suitable challenge for Venom and Eddie. They would have to work together more than ever before and have to rely on smarts and skill rather than just brute strength in order to bring them all down. Maybe that's where Eddie can come into play. Eddie Brock just seems like a horrible journalist in these Venom movies. Sorry, but it's true. Venom solved the case for him in Venom 2. Anyways, this would give Eddie the chance to use his investigative skills to actually research and find a weakness for the batch of symbiote warriors that were created using the Toxin symbiote. There's also other directions for the Toxin symbiote to go. One option is Bren Waters, a teenager who bonds with Toxin after Patrick's demise. It's a strange story arc as Bren asks Toxin to give him an adult body, which is modeled after both Patrick Mulligan and Eddie Brock. We haven't seen what happens when a teenager is bonded with a symbiote, and that would provide an interesting new wrinkle and force Venom to look out for the teenager and show him the ropes to everything. I'm just saying there's a lot of story potential there with different hosts for Toxin. Okay, after all this talk about how Venom can fight Toxin in the future, here's a big question to end on. Should they fight? I mean, yes, it would be cool to see, but we've just had back-to-back -back Venom movies where the final fight is Venom versus another symbiote. And truth be told, the Carnage one was kind of lackluster. There was nothing to really differentiate that symbiote fight with the one Venom had with Riot in the first movie. So what would the Toxin fight even look like in the end? 
Maybe it's time to put symbiotes to bed for a bit and have Venom focus on another villain first. Maybe Jack-O-Lantern or Sin Eater would be a good choice for the third movie, and then maybe tease a toxin that teams up with Null in Venom 4. Now that's good franchising right there, right? I'd tune in for that. All I'm saying is that I don't want the Venom series to get stagnant, and that means switching it up when it comes to villains and final fights. Come on, you're saying you wouldn't want to see Venom fight a guy with a giant pumpkin head? You know that would be amazing. So, I guess there's no way Carnage can come back, right? I mean, sure, Venom devoured both the Carnage symbiote and Cletus Cassidy's head, but I don't know. Maybe they can reunite in Venom's stomach and unleash more Carnage? Okay, I know, that's wishful thinking, but a uh, guy can dream, right? I just want more Carnage. 